Hey everybody, this is my 125 gallon native tank and today I thought about going and catching some more crayfish or possibly just throwing my trap out uh, or something but I thought about adding some more crayfish to the trap today but I second guessed myself and I kind of paused for a moment and the more I thought about it the more I decided I think I'm going to hold off and I may still do it, I don't know, but I want to shoot a little video talking about it first and I want to air my thoughts out a little bit um, before I go out and catch any more crayfish to put in this tank. I had a comment recently, I had somebody ask me why I keep putting crayfish in the tank when I know they're going to get eaten. And in the past I've addressed that so many times that I didn't even bother to respond to this particular comment because I've talked about it many many times I know that these crayfish uh, have a chance of getting eaten I know that they might fight amongst themselves when they become soft shell they're vulnerable they might get eaten or damaged at that point but they always had a fighting chance to some degree now I'll grant you that it was never uh, a realistic true to life fighting chance because they're in a little glass box here rather than in a river or a stream where they'd have unlimited um, ways to escape and they also have an unusually high concentration of predators here in the tank and so on and so forth so I always knew it was uh, you know not a completely fair uh, analogy but it was fairer than it is now what I have found is over time my creek chubs have gotten so big this one in particular down here is just a brute and they're really really aggressive I never realized how aggressive uh, creek chubs were until I started watching them and I started seeing them grow up and they absolutely destroy these crayfish so these creek chubs are now so big that even if I put full-grown, large-sized crayfish in the tank, they just get destroyed. The chubs tear their legs off, they tear their claws off, and when the crayfish is finally just completely, you know, a lump of living, you know, crayfish at the bottom of the tank with no legs or claws, they just go to town and tear it to shreds and devour it. So at this point, I feel less like I'm putting crayfish in the tank that are going to be in there and part of this sort of dynamic environment where they might actually catch and kill some of the fish or you know they might fight amongst each other it just doesn't feel like that anymore to me it just feels like i'm putting feeder crayfish in the tank i'm just putting them in there for the purposes of the chubs devouring them and i don't have any need to do that i already feed the chubs quite well you can see nobody in this tank is you know wanting for a meal so I just don't see any point in throwing crayfish in the tank anymore just for the sake of having the chubs rip them apart and devour them. I'm not opposed to the idea of, you know, natural predation in a tank or live food if that's the kind of, you know, food that a, that a particular animal needs to eat or whatever. But I don't glorify it either, and I don't, you know, relish in it, and I don't enjoy it. So I'm not going to go out and catch crayfish just to watch them get eaten. You know, they're not going to go in this tank just for the sake of watching the creek chubs tear them apart. That's just not my cup of meat, you know? So... I don't think I'm going to put any more crayfish in here, at least not for a while. And then that brings me to the second part of this video what should I do with this tank? Where should we go from here? Having said all of that about the crayfish and the creek chubs, when you really start thinking about it, what else can I do? I can't really add anything else other than food for these creek chubs. I certainly can't put any big predatory fish in the tank without completely changing the dynamics of the tank. If I put a, you know, even something like a sunfish in here, you know, that would be just all these little minnows would be eaten and killed and, you know, that would be something different. If I put a bass in here, it would be the same thing. So there's not really much I can do other than say, okay, this is the tank and we're just going to let it ride and feed it every day and just sort of watch it. Or I can start making changes, which would involve getting in there and catching some of those creek chubs and removing them. 
but I still don't really ultimately know what I could do. I guess if I got rid of the creek chubs, I could go back to putting some crayfish in the tank. But until I get rid of this Chinese algae eater right here, my pleco right there on the glass, and then of course my spotted tilapia in the back, those are the three fish that really sort of make this non-native and I really, you know, I wouldn't want to put a bass in this tank just because of those fish. Um, you know, if I were to put a bass in this tank and we started having issues with these fish, well, you know, I can chalk that up to that's just the way it goes. It's a native tank. It's a native environment. What did you expect to happen when you put a bass in there? That's not really the same for my Chinese algae eater or my pleco. Now, my Chinese algae eater, I just, I hate that fish. But I also don't want to put a fish in there that's going to brutalize it and beat it and kill it, you know? So I'm just kind of stuck at the point of I don't know what else to do with this tank other than we either just accept that the tank is done and this is what it's going to look like from now on or as I said start making some changes and removing some fish in here so I'd be interested to hear your thoughts you know give me your opinion if you want to see some changes start to happen I mentioned something recently in a video and the more I've thought about it the more it's just something I'm not ever gonna do so I'll go ahead and bring that one up right now I saw somebody not long ago in a video they had bought um, crabs to cook and eat Chesapeake Bay Blue Channel crabs and someone had suggested that they keep one of them in their aquarium and so they did they had this crab in their saltwater tank well chesapeake bay blue channel crabs are yuri haline animals and when i was a kid and i used to fish in the patapsco river if you go far enough downstream and you get within a few miles of baltimore's inner harbor if you're familiar with this area, once you go downstream of the Thomas Viaduct, or if you're a, a train person, a train aficionado, you'll know the Thomas Viaduct. If you go downstream of the Thomas Viaduct, that's actually considered tidal water. And it flows right out into the inner harbor. And crabs will frequently, or at least when I was a kid, they would make their way up into the river. And I could go all the way up to Bloaty Dam, which is all the way up in Ellicott City, miles upstream from anything you would think of as being salt water. And I would find Chesapeake Bay blue channel crabs. Now, they were usually the smaller ones. They were, you know, they, they weren't big crabs that you would think about taking home to eat. But they were certainly crabs, and I could go down there and catch them any old time, and they were well up into fresh water. So putting a crab in this tank would be interesting, to say the least. If I did, of course, you know, we would just kiss all of the fish in here goodbye. They would definitely... Um, you know, I talked about the crayfish before. The crayfish might catch the occasional fish or something like that. That's not the case with crabs. Crabs will clean this tank out. Uh, I basically wouldn't even have to worry about feeding the crab if I put it in this tank. It would not take long before there was no fish left in here, and I'd have one very large fat crab. So there'd be no way of doing it while still keeping my tilapia or my pleco or any of the fish in here really if this if i if i were to go and try to catch a crab and put it in here then it would be that crab's tank in, in the long run i would change it over to brackish water and that's what i was thinking you know set this up as a big native brackish tank and you'd be surprised at the animals that are yuri haline that will live just fine in brackish water including sunfish bass perch uh, most of the shiners, these creek chubs, everything in this tank pretty much could get converted right over to brackish uh, without batting an eyelash. I'm not 100% sure about the rosy side dace, but I'd be willing to bet that they would be able to deal with brackish water without any problem at all. So putting the crab in the tank wouldn't be a problem. It would just be keeping any fish in the tank along with the crab. And I really thought about it more than anything just in terms of wanting to see if I could go catch one again. When I was a kid, we used to go crabbing at the Chesapeake Bay. When I was really young, we could spend a few hours out there and we'd catch a few dozen, maybe a bushel, something like that. But as time went on, they got scarcer and scarcer and we'd go out there and we'd spend a whole day and we'd come home with a dozen if we were lucky. 
and you know the prices have gone up and the scarcity has gotten worse and the vast majority of the chesapeake bay blue channel crabs that we get around here just minutes from the chesapeake bay don't actually come from around here most of them come out of louisiana uh, or the carolinas that we get around here so the idea of me going down to the patapsco river way upstream in the fresh water like that and actually finding crabs running that far up the river um i think would be interesting i don't think we'd find them but it would be interesting to see if we did now of course they couldn't get further upstream than bloaty dam uh the, well there's a fish ladder there now but i don't think the crabs would actually go up the fish ladder uh, at any rate that would be interesting to find out one day and worst case scenario i could always just go down to the inner harbor and throw a little hand line out with a dip net and it would take me about you know well i'll say five minutes but again it's been many many years since i've been down there looking at crabs so i don't know how readily available you know or easy it would be to catch a chesapeake bay blue channel crab but that was my passing thought that was my whimsical idea of putting a crab in this tank and then converting it over to brackish water and basically just having uh you know a blue channel crab in the tank which again would be really interesting but not really something i'm seriously considering it was just an idea i thought i'd throw out there so there's some thoughts on my native tank again let me know what you think i ought to do i still really do plan on getting the stupid chinese algae eater out of there it's kind of been off camera to the right but on a couple of occasions now i've seen it go after the tilapia the tilapia was actually just chasing it and it did try to latch on to my pleco one time while we were standing here so that chinese algae eater really really needs to get out of this tank i know i've been saying that forever but it's a lot easier said than done it sees me coming with the net and it vanishes and i'm basically going to have to tear this tank apart to get it out so maybe that's a possibility maybe we'll be looking at doing something like that in the future maybe i'll just throw my minnow trap in here overnight and see what we've got in it in the morning that's always a possibility too so anyway make sure you're subscribed that way you won't miss anything don't forget to leave your comments down below i'd be interested in hearing your thoughts don't forget this one is my 125 gallon native tank thanks again i'll see you real soon in the next one